so today a little bit different. Um, I am not at a trial today, I'm actually at a practice um, facility or a practice grounds um, over at the back end of Sheffield. Um, Eden's Field it's called, a lot of people will know this from the local area, a lot of the trials clubs use it. A good venue, got a good mix of woodland off canvas stuff, some streams, some rocks. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping for a, a good exciting day today. So why are we here today? Well, I mentioned in the first episode that we were going to do some clubman type reviews on different bikes, from new bikes to old bikes, um, to the latest stuff, to the old school stuff, stuff that's relevant to the, you know, to the clubman side of things. Now, as I said in the first episode, I am definitely not an expert. I'm a clubman rider that's rode for quite a few years and rode lots of different types of bikes and disciplines. So I'm going to base these reviews purely on my thoughts and also from a clubman's perspective. So all the latest internals of the gearboxes and the electronics on these bikes. It means absolutely nothing to me. I understand a bit of it, but on the trials bike side of things, the, all the latest gadgets and tech and all the rest of it, I think from a clubman's perspective is sometimes pretty irrelevant. We just want to know how the bike feels, how the bike handles, what's it like compared to what we ride currently. Now, one thing I want to try and do is, when I'm at these practice events and at the trials themselves, if I get the bikes to ride, the different types of bikes, I want you to jump on the bikes as well. I think that would be a, a, a really good kind of indication of how the bikes handle. I think it'd be nice to get other people's um, perspectives and angles on these things as well. Now, as you can see behind me, we're not starting at the um, shallow end, should we say today. Uh, if you can see behind me, um, I've got my Vertigo, which is a 2017 Vertigo. Now, the other bike is a brand new 300 Nitro Vertigo. Well, first of all, what I want to say is, uh, over the last week or so, Cameo Moto um, have been in touch and said they like the videos and like the angle that they're coming from. And said that they knew that I wanted to obviously ride and test some other bikes and do some kind of reviews. And fair play to them, they've come up trumps straight away. So, no pressure, no pressure on this one, but I have got the owner's personal bike. He's not given me one out of the box, he's not given one out of the crate, he's not given me an old one, he's given me his own personal bike. Um, I promise to hand it back in the same state that I've got it in. There's nothing broke on it currently and I aim to give it them back the exact same way. So Cameo Moto, a massive thanks to them. Um, they've told me to do the reviews on an, on an honest basis from a clubman's perspective, as I've said. Um, you know, and it will be that. It will be not a biased review. It'll be as I see it and as I feel it. Um, and yeah, so, and that'll be the same for all the bike reviews that I do, whether they're a Beta, whether they're an, a Gas Gas, whether they're a Vertigo, an old Fantic. I want to do some old stuff as well, because I know some of the clubman guys are, all, are riding some of the older stuff as well. Um, this is not for anybody else's benefit apart from the clubman guys. Yes, it's nice for me to ride the other bikes, uh, but it's not about that. It's about trying to get exposure out there to the clubman um, scene and what the clubman side of things is about. Having said that, I have got a very expensive bike sat behind me, um, so it's not the um, bike to be throwing downhills um, Richard's probably not going to be like listening to this. I'll do some onboard stuff and I'll try and get my mic set up so that you can listen to me as I'm riding just to kind of get a, a feel for it. And yeah, we'll just go from there. Another thing that I've uh, got asked quite a lot actually from uh, when I've been at the club trials is about the van. So this is a Caddy. This is a Caddy Maxi. Um, so it's got the, normally it's got the seats in the back, but I can take the seats out. Uh, but I can also fit this in with the seats in. It's only because I've got two bikes today that I've uh, that I've took the seats out. So yeah, transport is something that is relevant to clubman side of things because people have different vans, people carry them on cars. Um, for me, it's a caddy, it's a maxi. There's loads of room inside. Two bikes in. I actually reckon I probably could get three in. In all honesty, um, but two bikes fit mega comfortable. So yeah, let's uh, let's get them unloaded. Oh wow. Oh, I forgot dinner. I put, I put bloody tie wrap right front brake. If you can hear lots of groaning here, as he says, loads of room. There's his wrestling weight to get it out. This van is med for trials riding. Let me tell you that for a minute. 2017. I think it's a 17. It could be a 16 actually. 
Right, I'll get my stand there, that's in there. Bollocks. Right then, I've just had uh, five minutes, ten minutes on my bike just to get warmed up. I'm now going to get the new bike out, brand new Nitro. I'm not going to touch anything on it. I'm literally just going to start it, ride it on the same uh, controls as what Richard has on his, his lever angles and stuff. Let's see what we think of it. So first thing, most important for any club, clubman rider, how does bike look? I mean, personally, I think that, and again, I'm just going to reiterate this. Everything that I cover in here is literally my own opinion. It's nobody else's opinion. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just giving it from like a clubman's um, perspective. So the looks of it, I would say that Vertigo have, have really pushed the Trials brand into a kind of a new market. Um, they're so modern the way they look. Not only have they got all the latest gadgets and gizmos on them, the, the, just the look of the bikes are second to none. I think a lot of other bikes can get lost in each other. So I think like the beaters and the gas gassers, I think it's quite easy for them just to kind of, if you're at a trial, they all kind of mix into one, don't they? And you don't really pay much attention to what people are riding. But I think when somebody rides past on a Vertigo, you know, I certainly do, I think, whoa, wow, you know, look at it. Um, yeah, so this new Nitro is is unbelievable. Uh, I'll do some close-ups and stuff on it, just so you can have a look around it. Um, but you probably could spend hours just going through every single part of the bike, uh, which I'm not going to do. But yeah, amazing bit of kit. One thing that I'm always funny about when I get onto bikes is kind of like the bar position and the, just the general look of the bike and the feel from when you stood on the bike and when you're looking over the front mud guard. I would say the Vertigo is really like aggressive in its look. Um, it looks super trick. It looks super trick. Um, like, you know, I'll try and get a video or a, try and see if you can see that. Um, but yeah, it just looks kind of super sleek. So there's your cockpit. Obviously everybody has a, the handlebars and levers and stuff positioned slightly different. Uh, one thing is, is always difficult, I think, when, I'm, when you're filming on your own especially, is trying to show just how slippy stuff is and not necessarily how steep stuff is because there's nothing here that's massively steep, but we'll just try and get a feel for it. I'll try and walk the sections as well, just so you can, or the sections that I set out, just so you can get a feel for how, the, um, how they're then going to ride. Um, but yeah, the, the riding position and the riding setup, the cockpit, as I'd call it, on the Vertigo, to me, is is as good as any I've seen. Um, these are the normal, but I don't. In fact, I'm saying that normal bars. I don't know if they are or not. In terms of rise, I would say that's a pretty standard rise. I'm not sure if it is or not on my bike over there. I don't know if you can see it. Minute, you see the six inch on mine. Mine a six inch rise just because I'm tall and that's something as I've always rid. Um, so yeah, first impressions, first look of it. Wow, look at the thing. So the next thing is um, as important as anything to a clubman rider is just starting the bikes. Now, I know Vertigo have got a kind of reputation, let's say, of um, sometimes being a little bit more difficult to start because of the fuel injection and stuff. I've literally just rolled this front van, which is, what, 30 yard that way. So it's not warm. Now mine on the 2017, which I will show you, there is kind of a fuel priming button, which on this, as far as I can see, there's nothing. It's literally the old school way of get on it and start it. Now, there's no fuel tap um, that I can see. It is literally jump on it and everything is cool. The only thing you obviously got to watch out for is the kill switch. So let's give it a go. I'll try and give it a nice kick. So first kick, um, I have read and I have heard about the, the vertigos in terms of the, um, the the starting process that it shouldn't actually start first time because of something to do with the fuel pump. I don't know if that's right or not, it's just something I've been told. Uh, whether that's the older models, I don't know. But this, from cold, it has literally started first time. Um, one thing I have noticed actually straight away on it is that the tick hover seems really low on this. Now, whether that's just this bike or whether that's just the Vertigo brand itself, I don't know. 
but it feels really clear and really clean straight away so um, yeah let's give it a quick go so let's get into a little section um, like I said bear with me I'm on my own today so I ain't got anybody helping with camera which I'll sort so there'll be a lot of static stuff going on but just to kind of ride a couple of section, sections I have literally so far not rode the Vertigo the new one the Nitro through any sections um, I haven't really tried moving the bike around trying to hop it trying to turn it and all the rest of it so this is literally going to be the first time so what I'm going to try and do is I will try and replicate what I'd say is a normal clubman route of where you'd expect to go when you're riding a clubman trial. So I'll just try and go up some of these little hills here and we'll come back on themselves. I'll try and put like a, a tight little turn in. The ground you won't be able to see, but the ground is mass slippy. It's got the leaves that are kind of sludgy and greasy, what I'd call them. One of them at a trial where after a few times a, a section would ride so much easier just because of the leaves have gone so and that'll go for going up the hills as well so i don't know if you can see or not there's kind of like a little path here that goes up to the top back round there's quite a little nice turn an s, s bend turn here we can do there's also a little slippy route there which we'll maybe try and go up but yeah i just want to jump on it first time um and let's just see let's just see how she rides you're probably going to see quite a lot of my arse here because I'm going to be facing away from camera quite a bit but I'll do my best um, yeah let's get a go right then, so let's get a go I'm going to ride it in first gear to start with just to get a feel for it one thing I've noticed kind of straight away is I'm going to leave it in the normal mapping switch as well just which is, which is on the dry one for now even though it is a little bit wet it sounds really throaty I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up on the mic or not These vertigos sound like you've got the air filter off. If you have an old bike or an older bike and you take the air filter off and then you rev it, that's what the kind of noise it makes. So yeah, let's give it a go. Steady, steady section. So first gear. I'll just go up this little hill here to start with. So yeah, it feels alright. Well um See what I'll do, I'll come down just a normal way to start with. Brakes are as good as any. Wow, this ground is slippery. If I go out of shot, I apologise. So we'll go back up again, first gear. Yeah. I know from riding my other Vertigo that you can actually ride the Vertigos on really bottom end of the revs. You ain't got to rev them to make them work. Let's try and go down here. Whoosh! Um, so that's a slippy turn is that the riding position feels good it uh, doesn't feel any worse than any other bike again let's see if we can get this S bend in looks like it's been in a trial as this let's try and turn a little bit easier that's better now yeah nice um, the brake really sharp I don't know if it's got a new or not but wow they are super sharp they're a hell of a lot sharper than mine um, coming down the hill there you have literally just got to feather them on front and back I know it's slippy but that wants to kind of lock up as soon as you touch it so um, yeah I'm going to try it in second gear actually just to see see the difference do the same kind of route even better even better i don't know if you can hear that on the on the mic just how low that is revving that's not revving at all you don't need to give it any kind of ample you can just rev rev it at the bottom of the range um i'll tell you what we're we'll trying to do we'll try and go this little route here We'll go first gear on this. We'll go first gear to start with. 
and we'll I'm gonna start you can't see me but I'm back outside at camera here so no run up and we'll try and go over this little route wow wow <laughs> that is grippy let's try again that just picked up and went did that I was expecting that to slip a little bit Got first gear is uh, impressive and uh, don't get me wrong hey look let's not try and convince anybody that that's a horrible hard section but for some people some people something like that is not going to be easy if you can hear that something that is common with the vertigos mine does the same the older models is that the fans kick in really early when i first got mine i was panicking because i thought Wow, fans on early, but there, they do, on the vertigos, they do come on relatively quickly. I'm just going to try that in second gear now, just to see. Yeah, mint, mint. Yeah, the clutch is, um, it's kind of, not much play in it. I think it's more how Richard's got it set up. I might just have to adjust that slightly. This is, this is a rider preference thing. Um, if you can see here, uh, I've had to take that out a little bit um, <clears throat> purely because I found that when I was riding it, it was kind of, my hands are you know, quite big so as soon as I was getting to there, it was wanting to just go and I like it further out, I don't know if that's just because I've got bigger hands or not and you just do that obviously by adjusting the adjusters on top I don't know if it'll focus or not, um, the adjusters on top which is trick not sure if they're standing or not, but the trick if not. I think it's just more how Richard has his set up. Um, he's a lot shorter than me. Um, so I presume his hands are a little bit smaller, just guessing. Um, so he'll probably want it closer, um, closer to him. So what I'm gonna try and do now is this tree behind me, um, like I said, there's like a little S bend as you come through it. What I'm gonna try and do is, uh, and this is where you'll see the kind of where the better riders would make this look super easy. Now, moving the bike around is something that, you know, the better riders do very, very easily. It's second nature to them. A lot of the sections that um, we ride in the Clubman route, you don't need to move the bike around. So that's one myth I'd say, get rid of straight away. You know, you can ride this um, just by, as I've just shown you, where it'll snake through, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you again, just by being delicate on your turns of being precise. I'll be honest, the only reason why sometimes I have to try and move the bike around in a section to try and hop in it, and when I say hopping, it's you're not it's not what you're gonna imagine. It looks more like I'm wrestling with bike than anything else. But I sometimes have to use the movement of a bike because I've got myself in a pickle in a section. It's not because I have to do it that way to get through, it's because I've maybe gone past the point where it'd be easy enough to turn up, um, past the point where I think it's gonna grip. So I've got to try and move the bike to get it back onto that line. So what I'm gonna do first of all is for the kind of movement test, let's you wanna call it that, I'm gonna ride it on my bike because I know to a certain extent that I can move my bike around a little bit. Now the ground is slippy, so that is a disclaimer before I make a complete fool of myself. Uh, but this corner here, I'm gonna try and run a little bit deeper into it and then I will try and get out of it by just trying to move the bike a little bit. I'll do it on my bike first and then I'll jump back onto the new Nitro and we'll see um, if it's as easy for me straight away, straight off the bat to, uh, to move this bike around. I'm just gonna get my bike. So here we go on the 2017 Vertigo. Second gear around here. I'll try and move the bike just in front of the camera here. It's funny actually because riding this straight away, this actually fit. Whoa, shit. Try again. This actually feels straight away a little bit more aggressive, which I'm surprised at. I actually thought the, the new one would be a bit more pokey, but this, just ride through this bush. So, we kind of passed the point now where we can turn. Yeah, easy enough that. One thing actually I would say, I've literally just jumped on my bike then, after riding the 2020 for 10, 15 minutes. Uh, not the 2020, the Nitro, sorry, the brand new one. Um, and going up, 
this little slime here, here mine actually felt a lot worse <laughs> hell of a lot worse even though i'm used to riding it it seems it feels like this and again this could be me but it feels like and i don't know if you're able to hear it on the the mics my older one seems to want to rev up a lot quicker than the new one again that, that may not be a characteristic of the bike but it certainly feels that way it feels a little bit more aggressive this brand new one it is a 300 and i would expect it and mine's a 300 but i'd expect the new one maybe to be a bit more pokier off the bottom but anyway it's not it feels a little bit more softer but usable so you can kind of get that traction for people that have rode a four stroke you'll know that kind of feeling of low revs and just being able to tickle it round sections and not getting the back wheel to spin well that's what the new one feels like so anyway by the by we'll cover that later um now i'm going to jump on the new one i'm going to come down here through this section just try and move bike um in this little bit here so we'll go second gear again like our So this is slippy on this slimy bit here through edge again. Weights on front. Oh no, I've made a mess of this. Right, let's see then. Yeah, nice. Right, one thing straight away that I noticed. This bike um, has not got uprated rear springs on. My bike has because I'm a fat gap, I always put a stronger spring in the rear of mine and you can tell that with this. I'm not gonna start messing with it because it's not mine. I want to ride it out of the box like I will with all the other ones I do. Um, so it's a little bit more, less kind of reactive to movement. So the, the rebound's a little bit slower, a little bit more labor in this because it's going a little bit further down into the stroke, if you like, when I'm, um, when I'm trying to compress it. So to move it around, it's a little bit more difficult but but i think that probably could help when we get into a uh, into like a stream section which is just one round the corner so uh, let's head over that way we'll have a look at see if we can go through uh, some kind of a rocky stream to see how kind of stable the bike is one thing i've just noticed actually is i'm about to set off again and it's the little things like this that kind of i like to see in bikes to see improvements is that on the um, on the kickstart you can see that vertigo have put like a i don't know if you want to call it a little nodule on end you see it so when your foot kind of is on that it ain't going to slip off but it might seem ridiculous it might seem petty something something like that but you know the older guys um you, you, or the shorter people even i find it easy to start bikes because i'm tall but the shorter guys and the older guys you sometimes seem struggling to start bikes and the foot slipping off at end that's what a common one you see that little nodular end there will actually help small improvement but it's little things like that i think sometimes for the clubman that matters it's no good being able to have all the latest spec on your bike if it's taking you 25 minutes to start the bloody thing because you you know your foot keeps slipping off it right so we're at a stream section here this kind of thing is what you'd normally see in a clubman's trial people that haven't road trials before um maybe on the middle route maybe on the easy route as well but it's not like so it's nothing it's nothing that you hurt yourself on but it'll give us a good idea on how the kind of vertigo handles in the or handles for me as a clubman with the the slippy rocks and the leaves sometimes i think the hardest thing of riding trials is that when you can't see exactly what's underneath your wheels it's difficult because obviously you're very reactive then to the bike um, so if the bike kind of pings off rock to rock and you can't see them you end up putting your feet down you end up falling off a lot of time as well whereas bikes that are more stable i think that's where beaters get a kind of good reputation and why beaters over the last probably decade have been the the clubman's bike i know from experience with the beater is that they're so stable and when you're riding through stuff like this it kind of just track relatively nicely and relatively easily so yeah we'll quickly walk through section just so you can see it that's probably i don't know a foot deep maybe up a step here up another one what i'll do i'll put the camera at that end to see me riding towards the camera and then i'll do one at the other end i've got my mic on so he could so you should hopefully be able to hear me bikes behind ready to ride oh there's a robin there you can see it oh can you bollocks yeah let's go let's get set up and go Oops. That's deeper than I thought, actually. 
So maybe you can see now, hopefully. Maybe, oh God. Right, so nice and steady, second gear. Nice. Nice. To be honest, it's how I'd expected it to ride after riding it earlier on. So smooth. Still the tick of her. I'd want that to turn up a tiny bit, to be honest, but... So first gear, oh wow. So far I am super impressed with this thing. You never know what to expect when you get a new bike. It's just not what I thought. For that simple reason that I had a kind of... What's the word? A kind of expectancy that that it were going to be mass aggressive and it's not it's not at all sorry Richard that was your sub guard right we'll go second gear and we'll just try and nice and steady imagine there's a section just track up and listen just listen how low you have to rev this thing you literally do not have to rev it at all at all to get it to do what you want it to do we we'll try it in first gear see what it rides like see how it rides so same again yeah set first gear <laughs> i cannot believe how soft this thing is I genuinely looked earlier to see I'm not just saying this I genuinely looked to see if it were a 300 because it feels more like a, a 250 but knowing the good thing of knowing that if you want the 300 power it's you know it's there to be used it's let's see if I can get up that other step just at side go second gear on that Hear the fan again, maybe through the mic. So, second gear on this one. See if I can get. Oh no, 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 no. That is nothing to do with the bike. That is being shite. Get out this puddle in case I've got holes in my boots. I don't know if you can see it. You can grab camera. There's like a step there, well, how it zooms in on my finger, focuses. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can just get up that bit. There we go. Finally. Right then, let's go and see what else we can find. Better go and get my bike, can I? I'll go and get my bike because she's going to, oh God, she's going to think I've disowned her. good that must have even looked on camera that surely probably not right let's take this one. I'm better I'm safer on what's that better than definitely not better safer on bike than walking seems to fall over more walking so we've kind of rode it upstream we've rode it around some tight stuff some slip heels what about when it comes to some kind of steps like this? Now, I would say a section like this, this side, I don't know if you can see, it's more of a, uh, a path. Yeah, it goes up to uh, probably my waist, this. Um, it's probably more of a 50-50 um, route, hard route. This side, I would say, is definitely going to be in a hard route. There's not really anything to kick off. There's a couple of loose rocks and stuff. So I'm going to have a go. I'm going to ride up the, um, the first one on the left hand side which looks a bit nadgery and this one then um, after so we'll go second gear on both yeah I'm not sure how much spare mud guards are for these <laughs> but uh, I better price one up let's give it a go second kick I wonder if that is true what someone told me about these about the they don't always start 
first kick, something to do with pump or something. We'll get it a go. So we'll go up the left hand side first, as little revs as possible. Easy. Don't fancy going down that. Probably would actually ride alright, you know, but I don't want to make a fool of myself. Sorry about your mudguard, Richard, if this snaps. Wow. That literally just rides straight up. Let's try one more. I'm going to go first gear, you know. Stuff it. Let's go first. Let's try it. First gear. Just as good. Obviously, more revs. This thing is impressive. I hate stood up on its then. I see just need a twig, don't I? Old mountain bike trick, that. Whoa, Jesus. So, is the Vertigo 300, the new Nitro, what I was expecting? No, it's absolutely not. And it's not for these reasons. So I thought, with it being a 300, with it being the new, the new uh, model, you know, the new Nitro model, I was expecting it to be like aggressive, you know, pinging off stuff, highly strung, you know, not being able to be ridden by some kind of clubman numpty like me. I thought this would be much more higher end, much more for the guys at the top end of a sport that are doing this and that. Today, I have not rode anything on that. You know, I wouldn't normally outside a normal trial. And it's done absolutely everything, everything mint. The only thing I'd say, the only thing, and it's this is, nit, this is nitpicking, and it could be, I'm sure it could be adjusted very, very easily. I know on a normal carburetor model, you can adjust it on the, on the idle screw. The tick over on this is really low. So that is the only thing I'd say. Now, so if you're new to trials and you are new to riding such bikes, you'd want the tick over a lot higher. To sum up the Vertigo, in, in my eyes, from a clubman's perspective, is that I thought the 300 would be out of range, if you like, for clubman riders, but it's not. It is absolutely not. I can't speak for the other models because I haven't rolled the other CCs. The bottom end of this bike, where a clubman is going to ride the bike, let's forget the high rev ranges and the, the higher end stuff, the big splats, because as a clubman, I'm not going to do that. And if you're a clubman, you're not, you know, you're not going to do that. We ride everything on the bottom end of the throttle. This is so soft. This to me feels so soft compared to my 17 Vertigo, which is just behind. And that seems a lot more aggressive than this does. This seems a hell of a lot softer, um, which again, I, you know, as I said, I wasn't expecting, I was expecting this right from the bottom to be boom and, you know, kind of, coming in with a hip and it's not it is so so soft at the bottom with it being soft then it allows it to be usable you don't have to rev the bike hard to get up obstacles to get around obstacles to get up hills um, it turns nice it turns you know as we saw earlier on the bottom the front end feels stable it feels like it's underneath you. it doesn't feel like it's out in front of you i think some bikes you can have the tendency to feel like you, you kind of sat way behind the bike and the front wheel's miles away and you turn and it kind of pushes through. On this Vertigo, it don't feel like that. You know, negatives, there aren't really any negatives. Um, the only ones I'd say is that, you know, from, from a clubman's point of view, the tick over seems really low. Now, I don't know if that can be adjusted on the bike. I'm not messing with it now. Uh, it's not my bike to mess with, but I think you've got to get that kind of plugged in and programmed in or something. I could be wrong, I could be wrong. Um, I don't think it's as easy as just on the carburetor models with this being an injection where you can just turn it up on the idle. And I think with a higher tick of it, it make it even easier to ride. It's not an hard bike to ride at all. It is not an hard bike to ride. And I think this is why we're probably going to end up seeing more and more of these bikes coming into the clubman side of things, just because they can do the top end stuff, but also they can do the bottom end nagery stuff as well. Now I'm sure there's gonna be other bikes that I'll test that I'll ride that can do the same thing. Um, but from a shock factor, that is the biggest shock with this thing. I was expecting, as I said, to get on it and be it be well out of my riding kind of ability, a steady club and rider, and only be able to, or be more suited to the, the, the top end stuff and the big splats. I'm sure it can do them. We know it can do them because when you see the good guys riding them, they fly up stuff and they're going up big, you know, they're going up 
big uh, big steps and and massive hills and all the rest of it and tricky um, tricky kind of um, climb. So yeah, I'm uh, been it's been it's been great. It's been great to ride it. A massive thanks to Cameo. This is Richard's bike, as I said earlier, to allow me to just take it and um, after watching a few videos and and take it for a ride, I, I massively appreciate that. And uh, yeah, we'll 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 test other bikes on the back of that as well. Um, so yeah, to sum it up. I would say the new Vertigo 300 Nitro, it is a perfect bike. It can do the, the top end stuff, it can do the bottom end stuff. Uh, it's got very, very few negatives um, from my side of things. Other people might get on it and absolutely hate it. And other people might get on it and want to buy one tomorrow. I'm, I'm sure that'll be the case when we're doing these, these bike reviews. So, so yeah, massive thanks. Massive thanks for watching. Massive thanks to Richard at Cameo. Um, and yeah, if you want any bits and bobs, I went there this morning, got some uh, new straps from my van to tie my bikes down. Um, and over there, they've got a massive range of stock. Uh, stick your head in, I'll put a, a bit of stuff about that in the end. Uh, and yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Hopefully a trial. If there's anything you want covering, give us a shout and I'll cover it. Um, yeah, I'm in, in a bit. <laughs>